Welcome in to another edition of The Flagship, coming to you on a Tuesday. It's been a minute. Um, I was out of town. Um, Grayson had a, a relatively big event happen over the weekend. We'll get into that. And then, uh, as you can uh, tell, different location for myself. We lost, so get into that. Um, but uh, before Grayson hops in here and we get going... On uh, this Tuesday morning, I do want to remind you, the show brought to you each and every day, each and every episode, studio, uh, even though we are in a satellite studio today, it's still sponsored by our friends at College Corner, three locations, Oxford, Ridgeland, and Flowood, the Oxford uh, being the newer one, go check them out on Sisk Avenue when you're in town, um, anything you can uh, you can possibly think of for Ole Miss, you've got merch, you've got gift supplies, you've got tailgating supplies, T-shirts, polos, hoodies, sweatshirts, kids gear, everything and more at College Corner. Scott and the folks over there take care of us and they will take care of you as uh, we have, uh, I guess, officially turned the page to college football season as, um, I mean, the the hype is very real and it is palpable. Um, we will talk about that um, here in a moment, but uh, Grayson, um you know, you were a little busy over the weekend and, and last week, so we didn't get a chance to really chat. But, um, but yeah, so uh, welcome to the resistance and uh, welcome to the show. Yeah. And for those who don't know, I am officially a married man. I ironically, I, I don't like things on my fingers, so I don't have my ring on me right now, which is, which is pretty <laughs> funny. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a banger weekend. All the family was in town, a uh, ton of, ton of good love and, and, uh, you know, couldn't be more grateful to, to everybody who was there and, and there are a few people listening right now who were but that's why my voice is like this i mean it's always raspy but man i had to talk to so many people i didn't know for six days straight and uh yeah it's it's coming back slowly i didn't have any voice yesterday so this is this is a big improvement over where we were over 24 hours ago yeah um well it's not yet 24 hours but uh on monday um for those of you in the uh in the greater Nashville area may not have heard about it or may not have seen it or uh, had to deal with it. But uh, for those of us over here in East and in, uh, Inglewood specifically, it was biblical. Um, got close to six inches of rain in probably an hour. Wow. I didn't um, realize it was that much. Yeah. I, I know some, uh, some neighbors uh, had a rain gauge that got up to six. I know some people were saying close to four or five or four and a half or five. Um, but yeah, it was, it was nasty. Um, Check the basement um, right around dinner time. Everything was good. We got the, the sump pumps ready to rock in case we need it. We've got a new drain out by the basement door uh, when this happened two years ago that we had to deal with. So we're, we're, we're doing all right. We're, we're, we're cooking with gas over here. Kids eat dinner, put them to bed. Wife goes downstairs to check again. Bad news, the whole basement is flooded. So there's probably in certain spots, um, because look, shout out to the to to the folks in, in the foundation of the house, uh, whoever put the basement in, finished the basement, um, angled the floors well. But uh the basically the room that that I spend the most time in down there when yeah, it's not much. football season, my office is uh not angled well. So pretty much everything went in there. Um we had a uh, we had an Aladdin situation. Carpet in the office was floating. Oh, um, the uh, power strip for all of my equipment was uh, submerged and on. So I had to get the rubber boots out to make sure I didn't, uh, you know, get got with the uh, electrocution. Did the equipment um, survive? Uh, it, stand by. Uh, we are, we okay. are waiting. Fingers uh, are crossed. Yeah, I, I got to get a new power strip at some point. Um, probably do that later today, but, uh, it was basically only my monitors. Um, so I can always get new monitors. That's not a big deal. Um, but we'll see, uh, last time there was some water that got in there. It, it, it was fine, but this was much more. Um, so yeah, the wife and I basically spent probably five and a half, six hours, uh, hand pumping water in and out. Um, this morning, um, we had I uh, went to Home Depot, rented some fans. Uh, we got those going down there right now. It's pretty much like all the water's gone. Um, shout out to our neighbors across the way. Uh, came through with the shop vac. And then uh, we had another friend that came over this morning to help clear out the rugs to let those dry. 
Um, so we had a lot of help, you know, that, you know, it takes a village as they say, Grayson. Um, it sure does. And you know what? Credit to you. You're still here right now. You're on the podcast. We're making it happen for the people you powered yeah. through. We're rocking and we're, rolling. It, 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 yeah. I mean, we're lucky. We're fortunate. It could have been much worse. Um, I know some folks that were not as, not as lucky that they're having to deal with. Uh, it, it seems like all, all of our neighbors, it's like after they finished a basement or got some kind of expensive equipment in the basement, this happens. So that's usually um, how it works. So hopefully everything's all right with everybody else. If you're in Nashville, if you're in East Nashville, if you got slammed with it, hope you're, uh, you're doing okay. Um, but we're here. Um, and, and look, speaking of it, taking a village, shout out to the village up in stores. Ain't that but the, the Huskies last night, I mean, putting it to Oklahoma. That was basically what I was, what I was looking forward to last night, Grace. And I, you know, we, we were out of town over the weekend. We were over in, uh, in Arizona, having a nice weekend out there in, in Phoenix and Scottsdale. And then, you know, I was like, look, we, we get home, we got the kids, you know, back home. They went to school. We, I was like, look, we're going to put the kids to bed. We're going to have a nice relaxing evening. I'm going to watch some, some game seven regional action. And then that happened, but got to see the, uh, the tail end of the UNC LSU game as the Tar Heels move on. Great game. And then, uh, yeah, dude, your your Huskies. I mean, just no doubt, just went to Norman and uh, just whipped Oklahoma. So um, super regionals are set. We're not going to break them down in depth. We're just going to kind of do a pulse check here as you know, Ole Miss is not involved. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, just kind of first impressions going around the horn here. I, I, look, Evansville, good for them. I mean, went to – to ECU took care of business in Greenville and, and beat ECU in a game seven. I think they're going to get just dog walked by T by Tennessee. I, 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 I've got an offense. They do. They, they hit a lot of dingers, but I mean, Tennessee is absolutely yeah. just built for this. I think Tony Vitello and the Vols are going to get back to Omaha, I think, and they will be a heavy favorite to win it all. And they got um, lucky too. I mean, Wake Forest. Yeah. So did Evansville. Evansville didn't even have to play Wake, but and you know the selection committee did that on purpose because they wanted Chase Burns to get a shot yep. at Tennessee again. Yep. Um yeah, big L for Wake Forest. Uh, that was unexpected. I thought it would be a Wake ECU uh regional final there. It was not. Um a really good one in Lexington with Kentucky and Oregon State. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, you've got uh, Bazana, who could go 1-1 for Oregon State, an electric infielder that's a ton of fun, hitting over 400. And you've got Kentucky, who, you know, basically stood the test against the SEC. Um, the Wildcats are really good. Um, next up, you got Florida State. How about that? The Knowles. Yeah, they're good. Back, back to knocking on the door to get to Omaha. Uh, they will take on your Huskies. You've got Georgia outlasting Georgia Tech. They got NC State. I and think then, Georgia should win that one too. Yeah, I mean, you got, you know, arguably, you know, probably one of the best players in the country, if not the best player in Charlie Condon, who's hit, you know, 57 home runs this year. Um, then you go down, you got a really interesting one with some uh, friendly faces down there. Kevin O'Sullivan going against Eric Backich. You got Florida Clemson as the Gators go to Stillwater. And man, you want to talk about it. The wounds that Cliff Godwin and ECU have just cannot get through. They just can't Oklahoma, do it. Oklahoma State, man, cannot get through. Mm -mm. I mean, just a struggle bus for the Cowboys. Um, but dude, if, if we're comparing those two programs, I mean, Oklahoma State's got way more resources than ECU. Yeah. Um, Kansas State and UVA is a fun one. I mean, <laughs> the Wildcats go to Fayetteville. I mean, Arkansas just, uh, what are we doing? I mean, are we just like, nah, we're just, we're just going to, we're just going to let coach Cal have the spotlight now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Big choke job. I mean, I mean losing... at this rate, Dave and Horn's going to retire and they're not even going to make it. They're not even going to get a title. Ooh, I Man. said it. Yeah. I, look, I mean that, that pop up in foul territory in Omaha, Nebraska is looming large mm -hmm. right now. Um, yeah, it's a tough scene losing to SEMO at home. Um, mm -hmm. So the Wildcats get it done. That UVA, that's going to be a fun one. Virginia, uh, I mean, just 
you want to talk about a tough scene. I mean, Mississippi State just kicking it around and just falling all over themselves in the ninth inning. Mm-hmm. UVA wins that one. I mean, um, even St. John's and Penn, like all three of those teams, like gave all that was a great regional across the yeah, board. It was great games. And then now you've got like a Virginia team that's really good against, but they're not like, you know, they're not the Tennessees. They're not the, you know, the the Kentucky, the Georgia, the Clemson, even the Florida, you know, whatever. And then you've got a Kansas State team that probably shouldn't be there. So it's kind of a fun, like, yeah, they're, they're both kind of playing with house money, even though Virginia is a one seed. Last two uh, supers here, uh, North Carolina, West Virginia. This one's pretty lopsided. I think North Carolina think so runs through that one. Um, but good on the nears, uh, go out to Tucson, handle business. And then Texas A&M and Oregon, can the Ducks break down the door and get to Omaha? I don't know. A&M is really damn good. Not in College Station. Gettable, though. I mean, this yeah. is a Texas A&M team that, that got whipped by Ole Miss. Um, That's true. It's it is true at home. It, it, it is at home. It will be at Bluebell. Supernatural powers are at work here with the Colt. Um, so it could be could be tough for Oregon to get it done, but um, nevertheless, fun super regionals. Um, I'm excited. Uh, look, it it doesn't matter if Ole Miss is in it or not. I'm always gonna be in it for uh for postseason baseball. It's fun, um, especially when you've got you know some folks that are trying to get there for the first time. That's always good uh a good watch. But um, all right, before we get into Ole Miss football, we're gonna talk a little bit about the uh. ESPN's football power index and how just absolutely moronic it is. We'll talk about that. But before we do that, I do want to remind you, show is also brought to you by Drew Moak and USA Benefits Group. If you're looking to cut those health insurance premiums by 20 to 30%, uh, you're aging into Medicare, you need help finding a, a Medicare supplement plan, you can call Drew Moak today, 601-953-8449. Um, he can get you a, a free quote. You can also check them out, usabg.com slash D-M-O-A-K for that free quote. Um, he can handle everything, regular health plans, life insurance, dental, vision, all of that and more. He's a Mississippi guy. He went to Ole Miss. Um, he's also licensed in seven states, so uh, he can help you if you're not local. Um, he works with the nation's second largest health insurance brokerage, and he has access to 35 different carriers. So um, he's got access um, he, he's got plenty, plenty of, uh, uh, you know, irons in the fire, if you will. So he can, he can handle a, a lot of stuff for you. So that's Drew Moak of USA Benefits Group, 601-953-8449. All right, let's get into it. Um, the other day, uh, you had the, the football power index from ESPN, um, released, you know, projections for the year, uh, it's it's close to nine and three, but the FPI is saying that Ole Miss could go eight and four, which, my God, if that happens, I would have to think the that, you know, burns. Jackson Dart got hurt, was out for the year, or you lose, you know, skilled players left. To, uh, eight and four would just be awful. So I'm reading here right now. The football power index is a measure of team strength that is meant to be the best predictor of a team's performance going forward for the rest of the season. So obviously in this case, for the full season, FPI represents how many points above or below average a team is. Projected results are based on 20,000 simulations of the remainder of the season, in this case, the full season, using FPI results to date and the remaining schedule. Ratings and projections update daily FPI from seasons prior 2019 may not be complete but um what that doesn't give me any explanation for what this algorithm is or what it does but it is the second year in a row where it's just outrageous i mean i think last year they had usc as the fourth team and fourth ranked team in the country um it's it's and as a usc fan that was ridiculous i mean even this year they've got usc two spots below ole miss and if Ole Miss and USC are on the same playing field this year, something like you said went terribly wrong for Ole Miss because USC is going to get a little pump, punch in the mouth when getting to the Big Ten. Miller Moss may or may not be the guy. You know, to have Ole Miss, Kansas, USC, one it, it's outrageous. And, and and I understand, you know, some of the hype around, or I understand all of the hype rather around Georgia, the Ohio State. 
putting Alabama up there, sure. We don't know what it's going to look like with Kalen DeBoer. You're kind of going based off of the past more than you are, you know, the present, right. whatever, fine. Like, I'll let the algorithm say, okay, this is Alabama, forgetting that it's a new era of Alabama. But, I mean, Penn State, what? Ole Miss beat, stomped Penn State less than six months ago. Yeah. And now, and now the majority of that roster comes back plus all of the guys through the transfer portal and you have Penn state winning somewhere between three and four more games than all Miss. How, how I, I don't know what the algorithm is, but it's so wrong. Notre Dame, like, look, whatever. Some people are high on Riley Leonard. I love Riley Leonard, but Notre Dame in this instance, essentially being the, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh ranked team in the country. What are we doing? Oklahoma? What are we doing? Like, I mean, yeah, no it, disrespect to the newcomers, but. I mean, look, it, I understand that it's just some generated thing. It, it's, I, I assume it's not a human. You know, a human entered no. the numbers, but it's just some, you know, computer generated analytical ranking. It doesn't matter. So, but if you look at everybody else's projections, I mean, Ole Miss is top 10 consensus right now. You've had them as high as four or five. Most people have them at six, uh, which I think is is fair. I mean, and right there, so right there with Georgia, Ohio State, Texas, Oregon, Notre Dame, somebody, a different, you know, combination of those programs. But, you know, the – combination of what is returning what has been brought in via the portal Mm -hmm. and then just lane kiffin year five i mean the the culture the pro mindset whatever you want to call it is well established and i think that you know i saw some people the other day were asking like who's the team that it's now or never for our our boy jd pickel was talking about that like who is it now or never for i know Ohio state was thrown in there as it's you know ryan day like it's now or never um you know, I, I don't want to say this is now or never for Ole Miss because I think Kiffin is building for the future, mm-hmm. but it's certainly, you know, now or when. It's the last dance. Because this is, I mean, arguably the best team Ole Miss has ever had on paper in program history. Um, I keep saying it's the most hyped season ever. I know there are some old heads on the board that are saying, you know, well, you know, those those late 50s and 60s teams were good. Oh, okay. Yeah, they uh, were. They I were. can't speak to that. But, you, you know, we're talking different. <laughs> different eras here it's a different game i mean this is the most hype it's been since 2016 after the 2015 year with the, the sugar bowl win mm-hmm. um i mean sold out season tickets before june i mean that's unheard of um might be the fastest it's ever happened i know it's the it's the first time it's happened since 2016 um uh, it's just unprecedented the hype so um yeah the fpi i think is absurd i mean Truly, if Ole Miss has a full, healthy roster, no hiccups with injuries, and goes eight and four, there are, I, I got a lot of questions. You're disappointed. Yeah. That probably means that there was a disaster, like you said, an injury or whatever, or we're hanging Charlie Weiss Jr. upside down for the flagpole. It's one or the other because eight and four will not do. And we know, you know, the defense is the defense. You know, we expect – it will be improved this year. We love what Pete Golding has done in, in such a short time with a program that has struggled in the past, but it's still the Ole Miss defense. If the offense isn't scoring more points than its opponent, this team is not going to win. And eight yeah. and four, I think uh, some heads roll. It, yeah, I mean, look, let's let's talk about the the schedule because I know you know our our buddy Michael Borky was talking about it the other day on his show. With Shout you know, out to Borky. Yeah. Friend of the program, OG. Um yeah, I mean, people are saying it's easy. I won't call it easy, but I will say it is very, very easily favorable. Navigable, navigable if you stay healthy. Um like we're not even gonna we're not even gonna do the non-con. Furman, MTSU, Wake, Georgia Southern wins. Wake, wake, wake is I expect to be a win. But that's like one of those weird games where you just kind of fall into a lull. It's late at night. Yeah. It's on the CW. Like some weird stuff. It could be like a downpour in, in Winston Salem. You know, that, I don't know. It's a man. win. I, it's a win. Yeah, it's a win. 
Riley but, Skinner, uh, ain't, lose, Riley Skinner ain't coming through that door. Sam Hartman's no. gone. Like, it, no. yeah. But if you're going to lose a non-conference game, it's it's probably Wake Forest. Yeah, I yeah. Look, but it's it, a win. It, if Ole Miss loses to Wake, I'll I'll have a lot of questions. No, me too. Uh, Just play right. devil's advocate. Kentucky at home, I'm saying that's a dub. Not saying Kentucky's going to be a slouch or not going to be any good, but I think Ole Miss is better at home. Kiffin's been remarkably good at home during his tenure at Ole Miss. That's a win. We're calling that Jackson a Jackson Dark's the better quarterback. Yes. Uh, South Carolina, it, it's always a hornet's nest up there. At williams Bryce. it's one of the more underrated atmospheres in college football. I don't think he gets enough credit. Mm-hmm. It, you get all the space odyssey and sandstorm. You know, that gets a lot of hype. But the, that fan base – shows up no matter what that'll be a tough game i think that's a i think it's a win but i mean it's going to be a tough environment road game first true road game you know in a hostile environment you know I, wake's not going to be hostile um Never. so i think that that'll be a that'll be a, a true test in the sec but yeah i mean beamer and them are having to replace a ton um you know, it's kind of, a lot of that roster yeah it's a juice wells bowl um yeah true the first true potential roadblock or road bump, hiccup, whatever you want to call it, is LSU in Baton Rouge, October 12th. Um, yep, that's a tough game, especially if Nussmeyer is as good as – I mean, we know he knows the offense at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but is he yeah, is he as advertised? If he, if he is, doesn't know it, if he doesn't know it now, he'll never know it. Yeah, if, if he's as advertised, that's a really, really tough game. But if Nussmeyer is not as good as everyone says he's going to be, then that that's a, a bit of a – it's yeah. not as good of a game. The College Corner is headed to Oxford. Stop by their new location in the Oxford Commons off Sisk Avenue. They'll have 4,000 square feet of Rebel gear ready for your trip to the Grove. On your next trip to Oxford, stop by the College Corner or our other great locations in Ridgeland and Flowood. Hats, shirts, polos, pullovers, sweats, T-shirts. College Corner has it all. And as always, you can visit us online at collegecornerstore.com. That's collegecornerstore.com. The College Corner, where your game day apparel meets. Call Drew Moak of USA Benefits Group. He can help you with any of your health insurance needs. Drew is an Ole Miss grad located in Mississippi and licensed in seven states. He works with the nation's second largest health insurance brokerage with access to 35 different carriers, regular health plans, to life insurance, to dental and vision, and even Medicare. He has it all covered. Now more than ever, it is critical to have a health insurance agent who is local and accessible. So call Drew Moak at 601-953-8449. 601 953 8449 and get your free quote today. I think Ole Miss wins that game. I actually think Ole Miss goes in and handles business comfortably. Mm-hmm. I, LSU did nothing to fix the defense in the offseason. Mm-hmm. Zero. And they're still using Harold Perkins wrong. Yeah. I mean, just Brian Kelly has a lot of less miles in him, which is like, I'm smart. I'm the smartest guy in the room type shit. And like, it's like, no, dude, like, this is very simple. Look at what he did when he was a freshman All-American and do that. Um, Nussmeyer is not Jaden Daniels. No. I, I don't He's see got a, a better arm. Does he? Or well, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll say bigger. Uh, okay. Yeah. He's the Heisman Trophy winner. He's gone. Yeah. Uh, there, there's not a soul in that building that's Brian Thomas or, uh, like, they replaced their two best receivers. Um like there's no there's no chance, I, and I, their running back is on the other side now. Yeah, I, look, I, I don't care about Death Valley, and you know, well, you know, LSU fans will be they'll be ready. You know, hey, spoiler alert, everyone, the LSU fans are not the only fan base that drinks. I know people have been doing that about Omaha, like, oh, Rocco's is so sad. Like, oh, hey, look, other fan bases are going to go, and other fan bases are going to drink. It's going to yeah. be fine. That whole narrative drives me insane. I mean, some of the stuff that I saw in Hoover, it's like, man, some of y'all got problems. Like, y'all need to call somebody. Because some of the the antics and the scenes in the RV park at Hoover Met, it's like, that's way too much booze. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I think Ole Miss wins that game. It's, it's LSU. It'll be tough. There's history there. There's history with the rivalry. It'll be a tough. It's probably going to be a night game, I'd imagine. The Reds are going to get up for it, too. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, this is the year where, like, there are no excuses. Like, Mm -hmm. you are the hunted. You need to be strapped and ready to go. 
And I think Kiffin understands that. I think Jackson Dart, like that's what's so big about this Ole Miss team is you've got dudes at every level on both sides that know what's going on. Like there is no deer in the headlights for for Jackson Dart anymore or, or Trey Harris or Jared I really, Ivey. Any guy on either side of the ball. Everybody's old. They're experienced. They've been there before. They've played in these types of games. I, I mean, no, it, it's – they'll be ready to go. Um I think that's a win, but I mean, that's truly a potential roadblock. And then you get the, um, you get the bye week after that to get prep for Oklahoma, which is big. That'll be a huge, huge, huge home game. Um, First time the Sooners travel to Oxford. Um, It's the first time since the 99 independence bowl um, where Ole Miss upset Oklahoma and, uh, Oklahoma goes on the next year to win it all in uh, Bob Stoops' uh, second year. Um, but, yeah, I, I think another game where I think Ole Miss is expected to win, um, Jackson Arnold is is a hell of a talent, but he's going to be playing in his first, you know, SEC season. It's going to be a raucous crowd in Oxford. It'll be sold out. I mean, I, I think Ole Miss wins that one. Just yep. as good I- as Kiffin's been at home, and you look, you're just the better team on paper. Yes, I agree. No, I, I I completely agree with the one. I'm actually hoping that'll be the trip I make down to Oxford this year. I haven't quite sorted that out yet, and I know I need to. Um, have a, yeah. have a few other priorities to handle first, but uh, yeah, yeah that, I think that'll be a fun game too. And I think Oklahoma. I do think like first year in the SEC. I think they're a lot of those guys are going to make the trip to Oxford, which will be fun too. Yeah. Um, this one look. I, I go back and forth on, you know, well, it's Fayetteville. And it's always weird. But Arkansas sucks. Yeah. But it's, it's always weird. I mean, it, it is, is already it is always weird. But so that's November that. by that point. What's Arkansas doing at that point? Is Sam Pittman still the coach at that point? Yeah, true. You you lose your your quarterback, your running back, your best linebacker. I mean, that team is just decimated by the portal. Mm-hmm. I think they're gonna be absolute garbage. I think Ole Miss goes in there and really slams the door shut on any type of upset talk early. Like you Um, said, there's no excuses. No. The turnaround quick to November 9th, I mean, could be the game of the year. Mm -hmm. Because if it goes like we're talking right now, this is undefeated Ole Miss and probably undefeated Georgia in Oxford, Mississippi, November 9th. I mean, you want to talk about picturesque, perfect – I mean, the Grove will be primed by that point and early November. Now that it's not CBS, it's probably not the 2.30 game. Yeah, that is a good point. I mean, I, I would venture to guess it, if it's both – if they're both undefeated, I mean, that's Chris Fowler. That's Kirk Herbstreit. That's ABC, yeah. That's the A team in Oxford. Game day would have to be there. I don't. Mm-hmm. I, I don't look. I haven't looked at the schedule to see what else is that weekend. But there's no chance anything it, competes with that. Two undefeated SEC teams. It's in Oxford. I mean, you've got Kirby Smart versus Lane Kiffin. You've got the rematch from last year when I mean Georgia just pulled Ole Miss's pants down and shoved him down a flight of stairs. It was ugly. <laughs> it was so um, ugly. I I have Ole Miss losing that. But so at that point, yeah. here's what at I'm that doing. point you're just like so what? Yep, it's definitely so what, which is great. So obviously I know this team. Well, I don't know that actually. I I don't expect this team is going to go undefeated. I expect a loss, maybe two, at some point something weird could happen. Like we said, mm-hmm. maybe Arkansas weird again. Maybe South Carolina environment. Maybe Nussmeyer, whatever it is. Um, but I have said for two years now. If Ole Miss is going to get Georgia, it's going to be in Oxford this year. And yeah, really good shot. It, it it's it kind of has to be. If you're going to get them, it has to be this year. Yeah, it's probably a loss. And like you said, so what? Who cares? You know, you lose to the number one team in the country. Okay, fine. You know, you drop a couple spots back. You're still in the playoff mix, assuming that nothing fluky happened early in the year. But I'm going to stand on. I'm going to stand on Ole Miss gets this one this year. I think they're going to get Georgia at home and I'm going to stand by that. And if I don't, if anyone listening, if I change between now and November 9th, 
get on me because I, I want to stay true to this. I think Ole Miss is going to get Georgia in Oxford on November 9th this year. It just feels yeah. like everything is setting up for one of those Alabama type upsets. Maybe the field gets stormed. Maybe the goalpost comes down. Maybe Katy Perry jumps off the bar at Funkies. Like it just feels like it's everything's coming to that. So maybe you lose to LSU. Maybe you lose yeah. to South Carolina. And now it's like, okay, the season's on the line. We have to win this game, whatever it may be. It just feels like this is the year. Um, my man Joel Klatt just uh released like his top ten games that will shape the season. No mention of Georgia Ole Miss, which I feel is insane. What are we doing, Joel? He's got LSU and SC will shape the season. But I think that's fair. I mean, I mean to some extent, mm-hmm. right? <sighs> sure. If if that's a game, then why is an LSU Ole Miss a game? Yeah, facts. I mean, you got Missouri and Alabama on here. Yeah, what are we doing? Okay, Come on, Joel. man. Love Joel. Colorado, <laughs> Nebraska. Are you... <laughs> okay, so okay, so he went for the 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 clicks and the company. <sighs> yeah, whatever. Um, dude, if Ole Miss beats Georgia and is undefeated, heading into a bye week before Florida and Mississippi State to close the year. I mean, that's you're you're looking at 12 and 0 for the first time ever territory, number one overall seed, heading to Atlanta for the SEC championship first time ever. Um if Ole Miss beats George, I mean that's gonna that's gonna test the integrity and the infrastructure of Oxford, Mississippi. Yeah. I mean it's yeah. uh, you would talk about the rain we got last night was biblical. That would be a <laughs> biblical event. Um yeah, I, look, I wouldn't be shocked if Ole Miss beat Georgia, which is a testament to how far this program has come and what they've built through the portal. Um, but I think there's going to be a hiccup at some point just from the stretch of SEC games. Yeah. But like I said, you do get the bye heading into the swamp. And, and kind of like Arkansas, Grayson, I think Florida is going to suck. Yeah, I do too, especially considering that they could potentially have to fire Napier because of this lawsuit before well, we even get to that game in November. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, I think I don't have the schedule in front of me. Florida could start four, five, and zero, oh, and then I'll lose up. seven straight. The back end of that schedule is tough. So Florida starts home against Miami, home could against win. Samford, home could, against A and M. Three could win. Could, all those. I do. I do think A and M is going to be sneaky better than we think. I don't think they're going to be necessarily a legitimate contender, but I do think they'll be sneaky yeah. better than we think. At Mississippi State could win. Could UCF, win. I think UCF's going to be pretty good with, with yeah. Rocket and KJ. Yeah. Could win. At Tennessee, probably lose. Kentucky, yeah. probably lose. Georgia, definitely lose. Texas, definitely lose. LSU, yeah. definitely lose. Should lose to Ole Miss and should lose to Florida State. So, yeah, you're right. You can start 6-0 and and then finish 6-6. Six and six. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it, you know, what's that team look like at that point? I mean, that's the second to last game of the year. Mm-hmm. Could be in shambles. Nope. I And look, I also think even if Florida is not in shambles, Ole Miss is a better team. So you just go down there and you take care of business. And this isn't like – this isn't like past Ole Miss teams where it's like, well, you know, they got the offense. They're going, they're going to be fun. They're going to score a lot. Like, no, this defense has got some teeth now. And I mean the defense and, had and teeth. the guy in charge. Yeah, the defense had teeth last year. Defense was good last. Year. Defense was good the last two years. Mm-hmm. But Pete Golding last year completely flipped it, turned it around. I mean they were a top twenty-five SP plus defense, and they just added star power after star power at every level. Um, I mean you get a full season with TJ Dudley. You got poop ball from Arkansas. Now you got two lockdown NFL corners and Isaiah Hamilton and Trey Amos. You got John Saunders, the vet, back at safety. And then, I mean, the front seven is just nasty. Especially if Princely is healthy, which I he, probably know better than me. He's expected to be fine. The wow. we're expecting him to be okay. Um, that is the consensus. Um but I mean, he, like even if he's not if yeah, he's true. 75, even if he's, not, like, if he's 80%. I mean, you get Chris Hardy from Jacksonville State that just mm-hmm. terrorized people last season. You got Jared Ivey back, you know, last dance with him. You got J.J. Pegues, Xavier Harris, Walter Nolan. I mean, dude, this is like 
I mean, this is this is Kendrick Lamar like meet the Grams nasty defense. Yeah. Like this, this is like diabolical. Um. So yeah, I mean, so what? You're at the grow uh, uh the the swamp. Just go ha- just just go handle business. Just be better. And that's, that's the swamp could be empty at that point in the year. Yeah. And then Friday, which we can talk about that. The Egg Bowl should be on Friday. I'm fine with it. I act, Full stop. From, from a TV standpoint, I liked having it on Thanksgiving because I love sitting down with a piece the of only game. pie and watching it. But, like, Friday makes more sense, and I'm cool with it. And, look, like I, I think that short week can hurt you. Yeah. So I think Friday, that extra day, is better. Yeah, and it's I'm gonna, totally it, cool with it. I, I think I think I think Mississippi State is going to be bad. Like Jeff Levy's a good he's a good coach. He has a good offense, but who the hell is going to be the quarterback? Who the yeah, hell is catching passes? Time. Who's blocking for the quarterback? Who's running the football? I mean, Woody Marks is gone. Mm-hmm. He's out. He's out in L.A. with your with your Kim folk out there with Kendrick out there. <laughs> um, I, I, what like? Whereas I know the motivation is you you try to beat your rival. Yeah, it could get ugly, motiv- but it's in Oxford. How motivated? So yeah, how motivated are 18, 19 year olds, twenty year olds going to be when you're you're staring at you know three and nine or four and eight, five and yeah. I, I th- know it's a I, well, rivalry I, and it will it, matter, but it's going like, to matter a lot. I think they're going to get up. I mean, they'll get up, but I don't think it'll matter that they get up. I think that's the difference. Like, I don't think it'll matter. And, and then once they get their teeth in, the crowd gets into it early. It's a Friday. So any empty seats that might have been there on a Thursday will not be empty on a Friday. Like, it's going to be rocking. So the second they get that first, they're going to get up. Yeah. Ole Miss will punch them in the mouth. And then the dogs will now, roll over and get their bellies pet. And now also, we I brought up Kendrick. Kiffin versus Levy? Yeah, it's fun. Dude. It's not they, gonna be it's not gonna be a friendly fade. No, they they put on that front and was that that photo from the SEC meetings? Who posted that? Was that Lane? I think uh, it was I think it was Kiffin, well, him and Levy. It was probably Lane. It's Who, it's spring meetings. Hey, look, you're down in Destin, you're on 30A, you're vibing. Nah, he they wants to rip other. his throat. He wants to rip his throat out. They hate each other. If you know, you know, Levy did not leave Oxford in a cordial way. Mm-hmm. A lot of speculation and rumors around that and what was said no if they kiffin can put if kiffin if kiffin can hang a 70 burger he's gonna do it oh yeah without so doubt. i'm looking at 11 and 1 right now yeah i i see no i see no less than 10 and 2 and i as a fan putting my you know journalist analyst whatever hat aside as a fan i expect 10 wins you know like i 10 and I, 10 and 2 gets you in the playoff right and that's fine that's yeah. fine. You know, Who cares? At that point, 10 and 2, you don't go to Atlanta. So what? Rest mm-hmm. up and get ready for the playoff. I had people ask me all weekend out of town who don't know anything about college football or some who do know about college football. They're like, what do you expect from Ole Miss this year? I said, they will be in the playoff. Yeah. If they're not, it's a severe disappointment. If they're not in the final four, I think it's a little bit of a letdown. I, I think this, this yeah. team... I think you're a little bit bummed if they're not in the think, final four, if they're not I in think, the playoff has role. Right. And that's like, people keep asking like, does Ole Miss really need this many receivers? Do they need this many running backs? O-line. Do, Kiffin's building to play a 16 game, you know, type yep. season. How many playoff games would you need? So you'd have 12 regular right. season. Yeah. SEC championship, maybe. Math is hard. First round, second round, national championship. <laughs> <laughs> Look, nice. we're, we're, we're killing it. The math ain't mathing, but you, you get what we're saying. Like Kiffin's building for more than 12 games. So that's the reason for three the rounds, depth. then the national championship. Yeah, I was going to say 12 teams. Sem- semi, then, yeah. Nice. So, yeah, <laughs> very good. Uh, yeah, so that's what I keep telling people about, you know, all the additions that keep happening. Like, hey, man, they're going to be ready for whatever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, ten and two gets you in, in my opinion, safely. Eleven and one, absolutely. You're hosting a playoff game. Uh, might still host with ten and two, so we'll see. I, but look, I, uh, I mentioned Borky. He he brought it up on his podcast. In the last ten years, there's only been one time a ten and two SEC team was left out. So, 
There you go. Um, or, or excuse me, not left out, not been in the top 12. So would be. I knew, I knew what you meant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hypothetically so, left out. So yeah. So 10 and two with that schedule, you're in. So um, basically what we're saying is don't pay attention to the FPI. It's dumb. Yeah. Um, <laughs> most everybody has Ole Miss in the top five or top 10 at least. So uh, it's going to be a hell of a fall. Um, we're going to be here all summer to get you, get you hyped for it, get you prepped. Just go ahead and turn that slow cooker on. Let's get this, uh, let's get this brisket or this, uh, you know, the, these, uh, th this whole hog ready for, uh, for the fall. It's going to be fun. Um, Grayson, we appreciate you. I told you this was going to be our flu game pod. You're battling <laughs> through a voice. You don't have a voice. I had a flooded basement. Like we, we, we got it done though. Um, We'll be, uh, we'll be back this week with more podcasts. It will be a short week for me as I head to Tampa on Thursday for OT7 Finals. We'll have tons of content from down there as there are 20-plus prospects down there. Ole Miss is recruiting, so we'll have a lot of stuff from uh, we'll from Tampa. We'll break it down on Monday. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. Um, and uh, be sure to stay locked in with omspirit.com. If, if you're not a member of the community already, one dollar for one month right now. We got a we got a OV special, flash sale special. It's only a dollar. Uh, come join the conversation. We have a lot of fun. We cover Ole Miss. I mean, I think extensively, um, as good as anyone in the country. We've got recruiting. We got portal. We've got team stuff. We got in depth interviews. If you haven't checked out the Ivy League podcast, you need to do it. Jared and does a fantastic job, and 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 our boy Ben Garrett crushes it with the with the production. Um, if you haven't, if you haven't listened to those podcasts, they're they're great. They're a lot of fun, and uh, and we got podcasts here on the flagship. So we'll have more this week. Grayson, as always, we appreciate it and 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 welcome. Um, Thank hey, you. Yeah, it's good to be get, here. Get that practice going with the with the ring. You, you get you get used to it. Uh, I know. I'm not. A, I know. You know. I never wore a ring. I was never a ring guy. But That's what people keep saying. Once you once you get used to it, you just don't even feel it anymore. Um, <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, congratulations to you uh, and the misses. Um, that that's awesome. And uh, like I said, we'll have more podcasts this week. So, uh, for for Grayson over there, I'm Zach. This has been the flagship. Until next time, we out of here.